I was gonna wait to do film reviews until I had like any sort of setup equipment for it, but I need to talk about what I just saw. So, um, I'm gonna begin with a couple of disclaimers in case the terrible quality of everything about this video hasn't already scared you off. Um, the subject matter I will be speaking of on this film, Heavy, 1995, by some dude James, I forget his last name already, it's only been like 10 minutes since I watched this, but whatever. Um, it deals with a handful of uncomfortable subjects, it surrounds an overweight man who is completely isolated and depressed at the very least. I think I I would I would assume he has other mental illnesses. I don't know though. Anyway, moreover, um I am not a psychologist and I am also not a professional, so I will not be using corporate language. Meaning I will have moments of some not so family friendly words coming out of my mouth. So if any of these things alone are enough of a reason for you to not continue watching this video, I do not blame you, and maybe one day I will put out something watchable. In the meantime though, this is for me, this is my own therapy, because everybody that took part in this film desperately needs it. And I already did, but I am gonna act like this film is what did it for me. So. Oh, I also will be spoiling. I'm going to try to say as little as possible while also giving everything that needs to be given. Um, the initial setup of the film, you kind of are led to believe that it's going to turn into like a rom-com of sorts. Um, cause there's like, like the guy Vic has a pretty obvious crush on this new waitress and like, she's cute. Like it makes sense. Like pretty new girl, lonely guy, she's nice and like goes out of her way to talk to him. Yeah, most men are gonna be like, especially a, a, a lonely man, it's gonna be like, damn, she wants me. I kind of thought she wanted him. Her boyfriend picks her up, because of course he does. They go home, he plays a fucking love song for her on his little guitar, he's singing to her while she's watching TV, smoking a cigarette, and she's not into it. He's like, babe, why don't you love my music? What's wrong? She's like, I've heard it like 10 times. Bitch, already, okay? I don't care how many times your boyfriend plays a little song, if he's gonna sing to you, just enjoy it. Or don't date a musician. Red flag number one for this bitch, right? Uh, carry on. This movie drags, also. I want to say it's worth the time, but it is one of the most uncomfortable experiences I've ever had in my life, because, like, halfway through the film, it turns into a fucking horror story all of a sudden. Out of nowhere. Like, totally out of left field. I was, like, I wasn't really enjoying it before that. Because, like, it was just, like, kind of uncomfortable and just a little bit sad, really. Like, you could just tell that this dude probably isn't getting the girl. But it's weird because they really want you to think it's a possibility. And I did believe that it had to be. I think in part because I, I could not believe that this movie could end like that. Um, so, long story short... It kind of just continues like that, where Victor, the chef here, gets more and more into her. Um, and she's just like kind of reciprocating, but not really. Um, oh, Victor's mother is the owner of the pizza joint that they work at. I, I, I only throw that in now because like she's kind of relevant because she dies. Like she's only in the first like. 20 minutes of the film, really. 
and then you have like a couple scenes of her in the hospital but like for the most part she's just kind of like an entity and she doesn't really do much for the story they put in like a lot of like weird things too that really don't need to be a part of the plot like they're just filler the mother dying is one of them weirdly enough and okay part of what set me the fuck off about really really wanting to talk shit about this movie is how fucking awful all of these characters are honestly like victor is the most redeemable and he's a fucking freak to be honest like it's like like i really wanted to root for him and i really wanted to like him because like he seems like a nice dude like he seems like a genuine just like lonely sad guy that just doesn't really know how to be like normal right so like you kind of want to feel bad for him and like root for him but like he has these weird ass fantasies that like and i i don't know if they're like intrusive thoughts or what but it's fucking scary to be honest like halfway through the movie and this is before his mom's in the hospital or anything it's the very day that she ends up like collapsing and he takes her there but still like you can't blame it on like the, the the stress of the drama he's going through because he's not in it yet other than just like being alive which real right but oh my god because okay so he's walking home from the grocery store and he passes he's, he's walking down this bridge and it's it's one of the ones that's got like a river underneath it like most bridges but um he sees that waitress the new one at the bottom of the fucking river it's, it's like a shallow area, but she's just like laying there, unconscious. And I was kind of under the impression at first that maybe it was just going to be like weird and she was like either high on some kind of something and she just like went for a swim and was chilling and she'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you this involved? Why are you following me? Like, I thought it would turn into something like that. No, she's like fully unconscious um totally like borderline dead um and he gives her the worst mouth-to-mouth resuscitation i've ever seen in my life she would have died in real life like ain't no way it's like this pitiful little he's he's basically just giving her like a little peck like it's not that that and she coughed up like no water i mean i know it's a movie but still like anyway yeah um, so she coughs up a little, they look at each other, they have, like, a weird little glance, and then he's back on the bridge, he's standing there, holding his groceries, and then he looks down, and nobody's down there. I have a lot of concerns about that. And the whole movie it doesn't really say much, which is like almost adorable for a minute. And then that happens and you're like, oh, this guy's nuts. Like this guy's a fucking threat. <laughs> it's really, really hard to continue liking him from, from this point forward. Um, he won't, he won't let up. Like he's in love with this woman and it's so weird. Cause like she sucks. She does not give a fuck about him. Literally she is so selfish. It's sick. I fucking her so much. What really drove it in for me was, um, so this dude's mom's in the hospital. Everyone knows that she's in the hospital, right? His mom ends up dying, like, pretty quickly into the, into, into the film. But he doesn't tell anybody until, um, Callie, the new waitress bitch, is like, yo, can I go with you to visit your mom in the hospital? And he ends up just taking her, taking her to the grave. He didn't want to take her to the hospital in the first place, which you realize afterwards is because she's dead. He didn't tell anyone yet. But this bitch gets mad at him for not telling anyone that his mom died like it's anyone's fucking business. Like, the diner didn't shut down. Like, these waitresses weren't out of work or anything. Like, it wasn't really any of their fucking business. And she yells at him in front of his mother's grave who died two weeks ago because victor why wouldn't you tell me the bitch that started working here like a month ago 
I'm really invested in your mother's life, and I deserve to know just as much as you do. Are you fucking kidding me? Why? So you can bitch to her about your co-worker? Because I'm pretty fucking sure that's all she wanted to do. Which, by the way, was disgusting enough in and of itself for her to do that. To be like, yo, can I visit my boss in the hospital? Your mommy? Because she had just gotten in a fight with like the, the other waitress there. And I'm pretty fucking sure that's all she wanted to talk about. And the only reason she could even ask him that was because of the fight that she got in with the waitress. One of the, one of the regular guys there, like, fought Victor outside, literally, like, punched him in the face. I think, no, I think he just slapped him, and then he, like, punched him back in his head a little bit, because he was drunk and stupid. Um, and so, like, the, the, Callie watches that interaction. She knows it's about her. She started that. Like, this guy is fighting Victor because he defended Callie. Because he's hopelessly in love with her, and it's really sad. And then... He gets in his car, and the other guy leaves, because, like, whatever, he's not gonna break the car down just to fucking punch this dude in the face. Um, and all she does is walk over to him, knock on the window, point at the lock, doesn't even, like, say anything, just points. He unlocks it, and then she's like, can you take me home? Excuse me, bitch? Are you okay? Maybe? You know, I was just waiting for someone to ask this man if he was fucking alright. That was it. You know his mom's in the hospital. He's clearly not okay in general. Even when his mom was healthy, so to speak. He was fucking miserable. It was clear. This man never said a fucking word, and when he did, it was just like, okay. Like, I mean, he was a fucking... He was, he was, I'll cry for help, and then some. The only time anyone asked him is at the end. When Callie comes in with her boyfriend, who's pissed and yelling at Victor for, like, no reason. They come in after hours. And she goes, are you okay? And then her boyfriend, like, interrupts and is like, she's quitting. And she's here for her money. Motherfucker. Like, basically. He doesn't say motherfucker, but he's a dick about it. So he, she literally only asked so that it would, like, lessen the blow of her being like, yeah, you're fucked. It's just you and this waitress who's been here for 15 years and wants to kill everyone in this bitch. And who just found out that you've not told anybody that her boss died two weeks ago. Yeah, um... I don't know what the point of this was, honestly, because I just, I, I just really needed to express the fact that I hate that woman with my whole soul, and um, unrequited love is a joke.